Got it. So good afternoon, Randy. Uh, so everybody, I have the pleasure of having Randy Welch with me today. We're going to do a little discussion. And the cool thing about this is we have not done this before between the two of us. And I have the, the pleasure of being with my distinct mentor in this alfalfa business today, Mr. Randy Welch. So Randy, thanks for joining me today. We're going to talk about some spring seeded alfalfa that might have a few challenges. And what do we do now? So yeah. What are, yeah, what are some of the things yeah, that come to your mind right away? Let's let's just talk about a few things on these new seeding alfalfa. So this spring was a kind of a rough, uh, depending upon your farm and your situation, where you're at and everything that happened in your production and your farm. But we had a lot of troubles uh, getting alfalfa started this spring. So we had a really nice stretch of weather in mid-April and guys got all excited about getting ground worked and getting the drills out and getting the seed in the ground. And then uh, we had about two weeks to maybe longer, some really cold, nasty weather in, uh, towards the end of April. And so what that resulted in is uh, some crusted seed beds and some very uh, slow, weak establishing alfalfa. So we have it at, at uh, looking at a lot of fields here uh, a while back, we saw stands that are just not as thick as they should be, thick as we would really anticipate for a normal uh, seeding. So one of the purposes of this discussion today is really to kind of help sellers and farmers to think about if you do have weak stands make sure you're getting mm -hmm. out and evaluating them take some time to do some stand counts and see what you really have out there and take care of what you got um, and we'll, we'll talk you through here in a few tips of uh, what we want to do to replace those stands yeah and i think too randy you're in your scenario and i we went through some of those cold temperatures as well and then we had a significant number of people that you know, maybe they're in an area that didn't plant alfalfa for the last few years. And they're like, man, this year we've really got to get something reestablished. So we're going to take a few chances. We're going to lay some seed out there. Hopefully we get the right moisture at the right time and we stay dry. And we had some pockets where the, the stand is very uneven because of dry conditions or a weed patch that overcame some parts. And well, we've mechanically clipped the weeds a couple of times. And now we need to make sure we get some more alfalfa back in that field. So yeah, yeah, there, were, now, yeah there, there, there were some really weird things that happened this spring to get alfalfa yeah. established. We had a lot of, uh, uh, usually get uh, maybe two to three calls every spring on sandblasting. And so that happened this year where we had the big windstorm. If you remember that stretch of weather, we had the big yes. winds. Uh, we ended up losing a lot of alfalfa in central Minnesota and central Iowa or the northern Iowa. The alfalfa just blew, basically blew out of the ground or the soil that blew across the soil surface, sheared the plants off, where the plants, uh, seed was actually in dry soil, and the seed was actually pushed to one side of the field, and all kinds of weird things happened because of sandblasting events. So that was uh, one of the difficult situations. So some of those fields, we just need to go back, reevaluate what we really have there, what's the stand really like, and I kind of want to get at the numbers. Uh, anything that you have probably in the uh, 10 to 12, maybe 15 plants per square foot, we'd probably uh, consider that to be an adequate stand. Uh, if you have less than 10, now we need to start talking about, is there something we should be doing to, uh, you know, basically uh, thicken that stand or uh, reseed that, that stand to kind of patch that up and make that stand better. So the, the, the thing I want to stress with our sellers and, and growers listening to these comments is that each farm, each field, each situation is very different. And as I've walked fields over the last uh, number of years in these evaluations, you walk across the field and you go, you say to yourself and you say to, uh, you know, whoever's your uh, assistant that day or the farmer or the seller that's with, uh, you know, we probably should reseed this spot. Then you walk another 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 100 yards. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, this stand is really good here. Why would we reseed this? So it's, it's a tough call. I mean, it is really difficult to know. Uh, which of the spots need to be reseeded, where the drill needs to be up, where the drill needs to be down. In some cases, you probably are going to be overseeding some of these places and to get uh, those uh, thin spots thickened up. Right. Quite often, quite often you'll see these hillsides or knolls or areas that obviously need more, uh, need some patch-up work on them. And, uh, it's very important. I think, this, so the number is probably about uh, 10 plants per square foot, absolutely, probably. Uh, once you get up to 15, then we probably would uh, not, not reseed those fields. So. Uh, the other key things that we want to talk about and the, the whole mechanical part of this operation is you need a drill that gets seed in the dirt, not on the dirt. 
And that's a really important piece of information because if you're putting a, a brilliant type cedar or any kind of surface application of seed, it's not gonna work. So seed needs to be in the ground. We suggest probably three quarter of an inch, maybe even an inch. Remember, you may only get one good rain. One good rain is all you may get uh, in the weather pattern that you usually get in the fall of the year in the upper Midwest. You can get just one, uh, one decent rain and, and that may be all the moisture you get. So you want that seed in the dirt, not on the dirt. Uh, make sure you're using a good quality drill pre press wheels, close the slot so that the seed is not exposed to the air that does it get that moisture and gets off to a good start. So really important point to keep that uh, keep that seed in the dirt and get it covered up. Give it a I'm really glad that you threw that in there because I would say that it's a very common question. Can we just go can we just go top dress that out there, Randy, and spread it around and maybe pull a harrow through there and hope we hope for the best and and you know just to enhance your level of success again randy that comment about in the ground versus on the ground is so critical because then they say well you know we could pull a roller out there well you could but if you have a flat steel roller and you have some crowns out there or some residue that roller is never going to touch the ground hard enough to even impact those little seeds that you just tossed out there so that's a that's a critical point for me is to get a drill with a row unit in the dirt very, very. Yeah, that's that's very. It's very important, and uh, you know, row spacing. We uh, get questions on every once in a while, but anything uh, around six inch spacing, six to seven inch spacing, is ideal for alfalfa, especially in these situations where you're really critically thinking about getting that seed in the soil. A good opener. Uh, when you think about a corn planter, how that machine works, and how that seed is yep. placed very, very critically and very carefully at a certain depth. Uh, that's really the kind of logic you need to think about when you think about planting alfalfa in these patch-up situations in the, in the, at this time of the year. A good set of openers on the drill, uh, good depth control, good down pressure on the springs so that the seed is actually uh, not uh, bouncing up as you go over those hard, harder, more difficult soils that you may find that are uh, thinner that you need to get some extra uh, down pressure on is really important. And again, good press wheels on the drill is important as well. So. so then the next million dollar question, I think, that usually follows some of this discussion is, well, Randy, we started that field. We planted 20 pounds of alfalfa seed out there. And you're going to get this call over the phone. And they're going to say, well, how much should I reseed with? Yeah, it's how bad uh, is it? Yeah, you know, that's one of the things. There's no <laughs> it, with alfalfa seed in general, there's no right or wrong answer to seeding rate. It's not like corn where you have a very specific regime where you plant corn at a certain population for certain hybrids and certain soil types and moisture level and, and all those kinds of questions. With alfalfa, you know, there's really no wrong answer. So let's just say for discussion's sake, you got a half a stand out there. Generally, where we've been was probably in that 10 to 12 pounds, and these reseedings is kind of where we're at. Seems Very to good. work pretty pretty well. I mean, it's kind of a happy medium. If you have too much seed in some places, yes. Do you have not enough seed in other places? Probably. But we've got to set the drill because you're not going to change the setting as you go across across the field for these reseeding situations. So somewhere in that uh, 10 to 12 pounds is usually a nice uh, nice level. Now, if you do have areas in the field where you're down to, you know, essentially zero plants then right you might want to go back over those spots with a second pass with that drill is what some guys do uh, yeah. but again each farm each situation like i said before each field is a different different story so you got to just go back and think about logically what am i going to do to get my stand back up to where, where i needed to get enough density to get those uh, stands up to up to par so i'm going to just have you recall some other information so we hand out these wonderful scouting rings when we do our presentations and do meetings across the country and and just randomly right so on yeah. that scouting ring it's going to have a chart on there and i believe one of the numbers is it actually even going to say 35 plants per square foot but that refers back to at seeding with basically cotyledons and very young plants can you help me have that discussion why on the scouting ring, Randy, it says 30 or 35, I think, as your minimum. And we just made a comment about 15, 20. Right, right. So we're talking about two different, kind of two different things here. So we're talking yes. about a rescue. Right now, what we're talking about in this discussion is really a rescue operation to try to get these stands that were very poorly established this spring. We're trying to get them at minimum level of competency to be productive next year. 
So that's really all we're trying to accomplish here. We're not in an ideal yes. world. We're in a, we're in a uh, situation where we're trying to salvage, uh, make a, you know, make, you know, uh, a situation that was not ideal into something you can salvage and use next year. So what, what you're getting at, Jeff, is that ideally we'd like that alfalfa to stand to start out at about 30 to 35 plants to have an right. ideal uh, to have an ideal uh, stand to start with. And so when you throw those alfalfa rings out in the spring of the year, we'd like to have 30 plants inside that ring. So that would have been the ideal situation. But this spring, what happened with our cold conditions and cresting conditions and just you know, really, really a tough, tough going for a lot of guys, those stands didn't end up to be 30 to 35. They may have ended up to be about 15. So now we've got a concern where we need to go back and start checking these fields and figure out what we really got. So, And our goal really is uh, next spring, Randy, I, I, again, going back to this plant stand and thinking about how many plants it takes to make a good alfalfa stand. Our real goal is 55 stems or more per square foot next spring once we break dormancy and uh, to, to make sure that we capture enough sunlight and make energy and, and create alfalfas that we can harvest. So again, when you guys, anybody, you think about how many stems can come off of that one little alfalfa crown, I mean, 15 plants, it doesn't take but about five stems per plant on 15 plants. And we've, we've, exceeded our number our minimum of 55 stems per square uh, that, foot. that's so. that's exa exactly right jeff what happens to alfalfa and this is why we don't want to spend a lot of energy on these stands that have that 10 plants per square foot 10 to 12 maybe 15 we don't want yes. to spend a lot of energy reseeding them because alfalfa is a wonderful plant from a compensation standpoint so that what will happen is those uh, thin plants have a lot of space to expand uh, mm -hmm. those crowns will actually send out a lot of shoots and you'll quite typically find that as a minimum 10 shoots per crown. And to your point, you may, may get, uh, you know, uh, you know, easily 15, 20, sometimes 30 uh, shoots per crown in some situations as those uh, plants mature and come into full production. So, so we want to be a little bit cautious about, yes. um, you know, going crazy on reseeding these fields. But on the other hand, if the stands are really deficient, then we want to, make an observation that we do need to make a, 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 a fix on that stand too. So another, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to have these discussions because you and I, when we go do presentations together, you, you can feed on each other's ideas and talk about, you know, you're, you're going to pull out an idea or a thought that I'm not. But one thing that I'm thinking about right now too, Randy, is um, so let's just say that we went through some of those harsh conditions, cold weather, Maybe some wet, cold soil, made some weak plants. Maybe we are dry, hot, made some weak plants. We struggled. Regardless, we know that we have a stand that did not grow under ideal conditions because we're talking about reseeding. Um, heavy weed pressure, heavy insect pressure, all of those things. And maybe it went through three of those stresses. How healthy, I mean, as a long-term stand, how healthy is something that's just been beat up and not had a break all year long? And what can we expect out of that? Well, generally, if the plants live, they, uh, you know, they, they live to harvestable. If they live the initial shock of the establishment in a year like this where they had a lot of stress, then they're, they're going to be they're going to be fine. They're going to be productive, healthy, you know, adults, so to speak. And they're going to be off to the races and, and hopefully live for uh, the life of the stand. So. Um, to kind of maybe build that up just a little more is that our job and, and as you're men mentioning and that your set of comments there our job i think as agronomists and alfalfa growers uh, you know is to really minimize the amount of stresses that those plants have on them and the the two you mentioned i think are really important is uh, one is uh, weed control and the other is insect control so uh, we have a wonderful technology that's uh, been very helpful for alfalfa establishment and, and production is Roundup Ready Alfalfa, and that comes uh, mm -hmm. in, in the form of a gene that allows us to use glyphosate on uh, alfalfa during establishment. And it's been a, just a tremendous tool for us to help in these situations where the stands are a little bit thin or short on water, trying to save the water for the alfalfa and not for the weed patch. You know, it, it's a wonderful tool that we should be using every time we establish alfalfa. This applies to our uh, summer seeding situations that we're here 
at this time of the year, we start talking about summer seeding alfalfa. Uh, we can get, keep those weeds out, get the volunteer, uh, in mm -hmm. the case of winter wheat, we can get the winter wheat uh, volunteers out. We get the weeds out, we get that alfalfa off to a great start, and that's uh, absolutely the right thing to do. And then the other piece that's really important here, Jeff, that you mentioned is insect control. So potato leaf hoppers are here in full speed right now, uh, here in the yeah. heat of the summer. When we start getting these uh, 85 degree temperatures plus, uh, the leaf hoppers begin reproduction cycles very quickly. And so you have uh, sometimes three, three generations, maybe four generations of leaf hoppers out there feeding at the same time. Uh, they reproduce very quickly and they can be very damaging to alfalfa. So uh, if we're doing these reseeding situations, one of the things you want to make sure that we're uh, paying attention to is leafhopper population so that you don't end up with insects hurting these nice new little seedlings that you're trying to get started here in the month of August. So, um, But insect control, particularly potato leafhopper, are probably one of the biggest insects we need to worry about uh, at this time of the year. So hypothetically, let's say that we have a Roundup Pretty Alfalfa field started or a Harv Extra stand with the Roundup gene in it, and we just reseeded or we went in to thicken up, we reseeded part of that field or added some new plants, but yet we think maybe it'd be beneficial to do some fall weed control with some glyphosate. At what point, because this, this question comes up a lot, at what point? is that alfalfa that you just seeded Roundup tolerant and when can we come back in there to respray and or try to control some some fall weeds? Yeah, great question, Jeff. So I get that question, we all get that question, you know, is that is the alfalfa big enough to spray Roundup on when it's a yes. certain size? That's kind of your, your underlying question there. Got it. So the point would be is that um, the gene is the gene is the gene, Roundup pretty alfalfa, is basically Roundup ready the day it's born until the day it dies, right? So it's Roundup ready. Doesn't matter when you spray Roundup on it, it's resistant to the Roundup. So we need to set the notion aside that we really train farmers on for a lot of years about uh, previous chemistries where you had to have the alfalfa at a certain size before you sprayed it to be safe and not, not hurt the alfalfa. Now, the new technology with Roundup, which is not new, uh, we should be talking about the size of the weeds, not the size of the alfalfa. So the goal right is to get the weeds up big enough so that you get you get herbicide on the weeds. The weeds are all sprouted, they're germinated, they're out of the ground, and they're ready to kill. If they're obviously too small or they're under canopy, those types of things, then we're not going to get them. Point B is that you need to get the weeds soon enough so they don't cause competition and hurt the alfalfa. So the point would be is that spray them. Uh, when the weeds are big enough to uh, obviously accept the herbicide and that they're not too big, that they're not hurting alfalfa. So kind of set set this whole notion aside that Roundup is going to hurt Roundup or the alfalfa because that's not the case. Right. So basically cotyledon, cotyledon, unifoliate, first trifoliate, all of those are glyphosate tolerant, folks. So it doesn't no, hurt at all. Now, the other thing to remember, too, is that small weeds die easier than big weeds. So you need to get some germinated to get them killed, but don't wait till they hit the bottom of your bumper as you're driving through the field before you go and try to knock them down because then they're harder to kill and that's where we have some of these issues. But anyway, so a couple of those things. Yeah, really good points. Um, anything else that really strikes you as we try to talk about, I'll, I'll try to think here to reseeding Okay, time frame, Randy, timing. Yeah. Let's talk yes. about timing of reseeding now that we're late summer, early fall. Yeah, that's going to be my other point that I wanted to make here is that we need to think about the timing because if you get too late, the plants just don't get big enough to live through the winter. And so uh, there's a phenomenon process. It's a process, it's a kind of phenomenon in plants, but in the case of alfalfa, it goes through this uh, little process called contractile growth. And what contractile growth is really the plant transitioning the alfalfa plant transitioning from being a annual to a perennial. Right. And that process takes somewhere between probably uh, at minimum, probably about uh, 30 to 40, 45 days, ideally 60 days, probably is where that uh, transition fully occurs. And that's when the plant forms a crown and actually uh, becomes winter hardy enough to survive the winter. Now, a lot of producers really push that envelope. And I've heard many producers say over the years, well, you know, I planted that alfalfa, it only had about 30 days before frost and it, it looked like it lived. And so we're, we should, we're okay. And we'll, you know, let's not do that again, but we, we got by doing that. 
but you really need to plant, uh, I like to say in the upper Midwest, our, our target uh, month is really the month of August. We need to be thinking about getting our alfalfa uh, seeded in the month of August. If you're farther north, then we want to go probably the end, very end of July here. And if you're farther south in the Midwest, and yes, we can sneak out a little bit later in, into, into September. But the bottom line is, you need to be thinking about the month of August is when we want to start getting, getting that alfalfa in the ground. And remember, the bigger the alfalfa is, the stronger it's going to be going into winter. So the sooner the better. So control the weeds, control the bugs, get it seeded on time, get it in the dirt, not on the dirt. All these things that are really important to get alfalfa off to a great start. Make sure you're following some of those basic guidelines. You should be in great shape uh, getting, getting your crop off to, off to a good start. And I think that would that would run into sequence with some of these guys, Randy, very well if they're taking a, a cutting in August. Um, maybe even some of them second half so they can transition into corn silage. They're going to have, you know, but to your point earlier, farther north, I was talking yesterday to a gentleman from Washington. And he's like, Jeff, our frost date is September 10th. So that puts him at a late July, very early first week of August planting to try to get 45 days squeaked out of there to get something going. And then you trickle down, you know, I, you and I spend a great majority of our time right here in the, the Midwest where August 15th, the Labor Day kind of works pretty well. And again, further south, now I'm down in Missouri, I probably squeaked by a little bit later, but um, just keep that in mind, everybody. We we bring this information at a 10,000 foot view and, and every conversation has a different twist. As Randy mentioned before, each farm's different, each set of equipment's different. Everybody's needs are just a, a hair different. So don't nitpick too much. We're, we're going to give you the 45 to 60 days is truly the message. And then you work your general location and, and heat units and timing off of that. And you should be in good shape. So Randy, um, with that being said, I think anything else that really we need to evaluate here or talk about for these you know, later summer seeded replant situations. I'm not coming up with too much now. Yeah, I think I think with the main points on the summer seeding, I think that was uh, just to kind of re resummarize yep. that. But uh, yep. you know that that stand density thing. Uh, you know, just do your stand counts, get your stand rings or stand squares out, and just start evaluating what you really have there. Uh, right. Make sure you're getting your seed, uh, get your proper machinery. Uh, is really important to get that seed in the dirt, not on the dirt, as we've mentioned several times here. Uh, keep the weeds out. Uh, make sure you're controlling weeds with Roundup Ready Alfalfa. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before, but if uh, most of the conventional chemistry uh, causes injury on alfalfa, all the broadleaf chemistries that we've uh, used and, and actually recommended in the past until Roundup Ready Alfalfa, keep in mind that if you're spraying those chemistries, they are pot potentially hurting the alfalfa and hindering it for winters establishment. So we would not recommend using any broadleaf chemistries uh, for weed control in uh, late summer seeded alfalfa, including these reseed situations. Only use Roundup Ready alfalfa because your other chemistries are going to injure the alfalfa and hurt it, hurt it going into winter. So make sure you're uh, aware of that. So I'm going to take us down a whole nother rabbit hole. Are you ready for this? Yep, go ahead. Well, Randy, we were just talking about some spring seeded alfalfa, but I'm going to get a phone call or two or 10 where a guy's going to say, well, I seeded my alfalfa last year and it's got some thin spots in it. I want to go reseed some back into it right now. And it's more than 12 months old. Can you walk us through just a little bit of how that discussion goes and why we would or would not based on the age of the alfalfa reseed into it? Yeah. So great. Uh, Great question, Jeff. So one of the problems we have with alfalfa is a little little risk called autotoxicity. And mm -hmm. what that is, is it's basically the alfalfa plant is basically toxic to its own offspring, which is really kind of a weird mm -hmm. phenomenon, but it does not like to have its own uh, seedlings growing in the proximity of an established plant. So uh, what we basically have found through research and, and experimentation uh, is that any alfalfa that's a year old or older does not uh, establish new seeding plants in the proximity of old plants or established plants. So for that reason, we really like to do these reseedings uh, as soon as possible 
once you detect that you have a thin stand, you have up until one year, anytime after one year, it's uh, basically a waste of time. So that means that a spring seeding that failed, we seed in the fall, a fall seeding that we would, if you have a stand failure, we would seed next spring. So uh, the, the time frame is 12 months. And when 12 months is up, you probably should not be putting that stand back into those alfalfa seeds back into that stand. Yeah. And so really people, and I've seen this multiple times too, where somebody will push the envelope, maybe even go into a little older stand, put the drill through there and they get seedlings to germinate and everybody's doing high fives and cartwheels and ah, they showed you, Randy, look at that. It's growing. And then that little root goes down into that autotoxicity or that layer of metacarpin, right? And it goes, Ooh, that's really nasty. And the, and the root just gets all messed up. And so then we do not get a live, well, we have a live plant, but it's not healthy. We've scarred that root system and it probably won't make it through the next season because it's going to be such a weak morphed root, right? Uh, yeah. And, and it actually, uh, a lot of farmers say that kind of your point about, well, look, I showed the agronomist that they, I, I got alfalfa growing. <laughs> but if you do the if you do the if you do the yield numbers on it, the yields yes. are just never ever never as good on those fields where you're seeded alfalfa back into alfalfa. You know, it just it just never the yields are just never as good. So there is a substantial penalty if you right. don't uh, follow that basic guideline of reseeding. You know, before the stand is a year old, and then when we get to established alfalfa, we like to stay out of alfalfa. For at least two years stay out of alfalfa for Correct. two years and that's that's a minimum now soil types will make a difference on that sandier soils you can probably tighten it up a little bit and get by with it but on, on loamy clay soils that have slower water infiltrate infiltration and slower breakdown of that metacarpin that you just mentioned it takes two years for that compound to fully um, decompose within the soil environment and then uh, it, it, one way to think about that is it's almost like a herbicide carryover. We talk yes. About herb, we talk about herbicide carryover quite a bit now, but it's almost like herbicide carryover because the plant actually makes a compound that is toxic to, that's what herbicides do, right? I mean, herbicide is a toxic compound that kills <laughs> weeds. And in the case of alfalfa, this discussion is about metacarpin, but there's a compound that's in that soil environment that does not allow those roots to expand and fully um, you know, use water and nutrients out of the soil, but there's that compound and it keeps hurting those roots until it dissipates and, and decomposes. So uh, just make sure you're following those basic guidelines. Reseeding alfalfa needs to be done inside of a year and then stay out of alfalfa for at least two years before you reseed a, another stand of alfalfa on that same dirt. Very good. Well, I think that's a pretty good discussion today on on replanting and evaluating those stands. So, Randy, again, thank All you right. for joining me today here, and we'll uh, we'll say so. goodbye and thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs>